coming to down to the Howard Stern show today? Well, coming to talk to Howard because I wrote this book, What Falls Away. And uh, Howard uh, very kindly invited me on the show, so never wanted to miss a hot opportunity. Here I am. A little nervous about meeting Howard? Um, yeah, I met Howard because, you know, I have a cameo appearance in his latest flick. Right. Which I've not yet seen. Oh, you haven't seen it yet? No. Oh. But I'm still a little nervous. Still a little nervous? Yeah, because I've only se met Howard as Fartman, and this may be different. Are you familiar with Howard on the radio, then? Not on the radio, but I watch him on, is it is CNN? Not CNN. It's e. 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 Right. I watch him whenever I can stay up that late. Love him. So so you're somewhat familiar with the show then, a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan. So was there any hesitation when he invited you on? Uh, no, no hesitation at all. I can't wait. My, my mother is, like, tuned in. It's great. We're, I, I'm just a big Howard Stern fan. What can I say? I'm ready for anything. I should have brought a Valium. <laughs> <laughs> or perhaps a Xanax <laughs> would have been more appropriate. <laughs> no, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm not at all nervous. Nice view. We're too high for you to jump. <laughs> Stay away from the windows. Okay. <laughs> all right, Mia. So I think you're going on after the next commercial break, so just hang tight. I will. I will. Right. Thank Great. you very much. Thank you. I'm excited. Mia Farrow. Always had a little crush on Mia. She's a hot minky, what can I say? Now, Mia said, you read my book before I come in, Howard. Make sure you know, make sure you read this thing. And I'm glad I did, actually. I wasn't going to read it because, like, I'm such a lazy reader and stuff. I'm pretty sure I have attention deficit syndrome. And in fact, I have a doctor who says you definitely have ADD. I must have it. And he wants to come in here and tell you all about yourself and how to cure yourself. Yeah, bring him in. I want to be cured. I want to get on Ritalin. I hear it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Ritalin is cool for... Adults, yeah, it makes yeah. you high. Yeah, well, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a legal high. <laughs> <laughs> a high I can handle. Oh, oh. Anyway, Gary, bring in Mia Farrow. I've, I've worked with her in film, I must say. <laughs> we did a whole day of shooting together. She was real professional. And she had like 50 of her kids with her. 50? Literally. Plus, when you read the book, you lose track of how many kids Mia actually has. I don't has. think there are 50, Howard. There might be as many as 50. <laughs> Here she is. Wow. Look at you. There she is. Wow. Mia Farrell in my studio. Isn't that cool? Hey, Mia. How you doing? Good to see you. Hi, everyone. Hey. Good to see you. Good I read your book. You. Yeah? Yeah, well, you know, because you said, hey, read the book. <gasps> if I'm going to come in here, read the goddamn book. I worked very hard on this thing. Read it. Is that it. unfair? I got to admit, not only do you write, you, she writes a really good book, because mm -hmm. you wrote it yourself, right? Right. Yeah, it's really a good book. Thank you. And uh, what's what's even weirder about it, I mean, I have so many weird questions after I read it, but I started from the middle of the book. I know I shouldn't have done that, but no. that's the way I read. Cause I'm Did like you a, ever get back to the beginning? Yeah, I've been, I've, I've, it's, it, it, the, there was one point I got so disgusted I had to close the book. I mean, for me, I, wow. I, I watch German en enema tapes, oh. and I don't get it. I don't get disgusted. And I read. I got so disgusted with Woody Allen. I threw the goddamn book down, and I, I just want. I wanted to. I wanted to smack him. <laughs> I, I swear, if I ever see the guy, I might, they better restrain me. <laughs> you might hurt him. I mean, the guy's the lowest scumbag on the planet. No. That's all there is to say. What can I say? Unbelievable. And I was restrained. Yeah, I just can't figure oh, out. Oh, you didn't say exactly oh, everything yeah, you, you oh, could really? say? I was restrained. No wow. kidding. There's, there's Hi, I'm over uh, here. Hi. <laughs> I want to beat him up for you. You think I could beat him up? Him I could beat up. I don't know. I could take him. <laughs> what do you he mean might you kick you in oh, the yeah. knees or something. Oh, really? really hurt you. Well, maybe he does karate or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could beat him. No problem. Right? Sure. I think you could beat him up. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> You're so goddamn cute, I can't take it. I thought when we were filming the movie and you said to me, hey, we want to come up to my house in Connecticut, I thought you were coming on to me, and then you said, bring your wife and kids. That sucked. Yeah. yeah I, I was thinking it'd be nice to bring the kids. No. The cows, the horses, and all that mm, stuff. I don't see no cows and horses. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's just a thought. I thought I'll show you how to make love. <laughs> He's afraid of animals. I read the part where, uh, first of all, I mean, just the lovemaking alone I would buy the book for. I mean, I'm like one of those tabloid kind of readers. And uh, it, their sex scenes? You, yeah. Well, no, but but your virginity was taken by Frank Sinatra. That's right. I can't believe. You know what it is? I decided with you. You must have had a bad self-image. That's all there is to it. I think you even say that in the book because you never thought you were a talented actress and you're so goddamn good. And then you, you never thought you were pretty and you're so. Pr I mean, you look in the mirror and you don't think you're pretty. I don't even look, you know. Really? You wow. won't look in the mirror? No. Oh, goodness. Not if I can help it. Oh, my goodness. Only if I'm going on television. You know what? I do really? think you're right. 
about Mia because I remember her going on the Merv Griffin show yeah. years ago. Here she was this huge star. She was on Peyton Place. Yeah. And everybody wanted to know her and see her. And here she, she gets invited on to a talk show. And she comes in. She sits down. And she says to Merv, I really don't have anything to say. There's no reason for me to be here. <laughs> so cool. I brought on someone who actually has some talent. And she introduced this guy, Ronnie Dyson. Who's that? He was a singer. Oh. Really? Well, that was smart of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, that's, we wanted to hear me, and now this guy's singing. I bet Merv never hit on you. <laughs> no, he didn't hit on me. He must have been pretty grateful I brought someone on anyway. Yeah. <laughs> that's very gracious of you. Yeah, she didn't want to be interviewed. She just brought this other person on so people could find out who he was. Because you're like a hippie chick. You don't care about like your looks or anything, right? But no, I care. You do care? I, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I'd like to look great. You I do mean, look great. Are you vain or anything? I, I mean, I, you strike me as not being vain. Like, you're so cerebral, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, there's too much going on to think about the other stuff. And I really, you see, but on the one hand... I have, I have to ask you, why would it mean a low self-image to go out with Frank Sinatra? I'll tell you why. Okay, here's what I think. Because <clears throat> I, I, after reading the book, I started to tap into this. I said, wow, this. I felt sad for you, and I also felt... Uh, I, I, I admired you. I said, there is nobody on this planet more giving. I mean, I've got kids. i got three kids, right? Yeah. I can't spend 10 minutes. And these are your kids. Yeah, these are my own flesh and blood kids. <laughs> I can't, you know, I lose patience. I, I, you know, and I identified a little bit with Woody in that respect. That it's hard to, you know, be around children. But I don't, I don't like avoid kids, you know what I mean? But, I mean, it's very hard to take care of children. I'm very career oriented. I know that. My wife is 10 times more giving to the children than I am. But I'm pretty good when I'm with him, I think. I think I'm a pretty good father. Yeah, but, but you limit your experience. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the kind of guy who could spend all day with children. But I, I said that going in with my wife. When we had kids, I said, let's have kids. I said, but I think one of us ought to stay with the kids. I know I don't want to spend my life at home with children. You said one of us ought to stay with the kids, and I elect you? <laughs> no, I said, do you want to do this? Do you, I don't think it's right for both of us to be out of the house. Uh -huh. and not, If we're going to have kids, someone's got to raise these kids. I said... I want to have children, but I think there's got to be a primary caretaker, and it can't be a housekeeper, and it can't be anybody. Oh, you did say you wanted to have them. Oh, I always wanted kids. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm but just I didn't want. Yeah, but I didn't want to. You know, I didn't want to stay home and be like a house husband. Right. But so they she. They have Allison. They have Allison. So yeah. it was cool. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that when I see someone like you, who not only has her own children, biological children, but takes these kids, it goes to Vietnam, takes in blind children. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I got unbelievable admiration for you. There's no way I should sit in judgment of you. There is no way I could sit in judgment of you. I mean, you are so goddamn giving. I saw her on the movie set. She sat there with these kids. She took these kids who had no life. I mean, they were going to have no life. They were going to they were going to be dead. Mm -hmm. Soon Yi was going to be dead. I mean, she would she would have ended up a, a street hooker or something in Vietnam or something like that, right? Yeah, they were going to put her in a shoe, f uh, to make shoes, sandal factory at 14. Oh, then she would have been working for Kathy Lee or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, that's not so bad. She would have worked with Kathy Lee. <laughs> and Frank Gifford. No, but I mean, I mean, I, there, is, there is unbelievable admiration that I have for you. I, well, then how does, how does Mia take it when people criticize her and, and look for some kind of psychosis in the fact that she adopts all these children? Well, because, it, because they can't even fathom it. It's like you can't fathom Mother Teresa. Uh -huh. You're like Mother Teresa. Oh, no. No, 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 you can't. No. Yes, you are. You can't. You, she, she, listen, while she's working for Woody Allen on the set all day, acting, she's still adopting kids and taking in kids. I don't mean adopting some nice little white baby. I'm talking about she's going out and going to Vietnam, taking blind children mm. and raising them, saving them. How did you get into that? Because we'll never get into that, right, Robin? <laughs> yeah, I want to know, you know, how you, how you, something like that happens <laughs> yeah, to you yeah. so I can avoid it. No. Yeah. <laughs> You're an amazing woman. <laughs> Well, I, you know, I, I the, the first child I adopted was from in the Vietnam War, uh -huh. and then I got very in tune with the, the orphanages over there and became aware of all the kids that would never find homes, mm -hmm. especially the handicapped ones or the older ones. Amazing. And I just tr started trying to do things for the orphanages, you know, raise money, send supplies, stuff during the war. And um, I had... Two tw I had twins and then one beautiful daughter, and mm -hmm. it seemed Andre and I wanted a larger family. You got to read the book because because yeah. all of a sudden you can't even keep track. I I've talked to three people now who've read the book. Yeah, it was me, Gary, Kathy read the book too. We can't even figure out how many kids Mia has after reading the book. <laughs> Do every, you know? Every couple of weeks, <laughs> yeah. every couple of weeks, There'd there's like a, a new, new child, kid. Yes. 
Well, it's not quite that bad, but uh, yeah, it's 14. Ah. But you got to understand, the oldest one's yeah. 27. Mm -hmm. I got a lawyer and a computer analyst. And these kids were like wow. considered losers by society. Now they're all like Harvard students mm -hmm. and all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, you're, you're incredible. There's no way I could sit in judgment of you. No way. I'm scumbag. But I, she didn't answer the question, you know. Right. I mean, because there is criticism People say it's leveled at her that there's something wrong with her because she does this. Have you have you heard that? Yeah, I, ha I have heard that. I think that that was wasn't that a lot of Woody Allen propaganda. It could have been. I, I mean, I, it was just showing up in in the newspaper yeah. at the time the, of the all time. the problems. Yeah. yeah. And I thought, how you know, wow. <laughs> well. You either understand it or you don't. Yeah. You know, either you're I, a giving, per loving person or you're uh, well, no, empty I, like Woody Allen. I, I, I think it's not for everybody. You right. Know? I right. mean, but but uh, sir, maybe it should cross a few more. I mean, I think a lot of people would get a lot of pleasure out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get such deep happiness and satisfaction really? from it. Yeah, really. They, they you ought to try it, Howard, because you're no. not a very happy person. No, I'm not. I'm a very sad person, but uh, <laughs> at least I know it. At least I wallow in my, my sadness. Yeah. Because... Because even through all the crap that you go through in this book, and I mean, you go through some crap, uh, especially with Woody Allen, which yeah. I want to I I ask you about, but uh, you seem to always get happiness from these kids. Yeah, it's amazing. They give, they give me... And I'm not I'm not bullshitting at all. They right. give me right. more than than <laughs> than you give than to them? I could possibly yeah. that I could ever give, wow. give them. Yeah. So right. wait a second. So I'm reading the book, and you got you've had an amazing life like nobody's ever had, you know. And, uh, and, I'll, and I'll go back, but this Woody Allen, I got to tell you something, I want, I want to strangle this guy. So here's this beautiful spirit like Mia Farrow, right? Okay. You start out like in any relationship, you guys started out good. I How mean, the did guy, they meet? Uh, let's see. Uh, are you, are you it was Michael Caine, a mutual friend, uh -huh. an old friend, took me out to dinner. I was in a play, a Broadway play, and he took me to Elaine's restaurant. Mm -hmm. and we walked by Woody Allen's table. And Michael, who knew Woody, said, uh, you know, introduced us. And and then, like, a few weeks later, I got an invitation to a party, a New Year's Eve party that uh -huh. he was given. Oh. Yeah. And then a couple months after that, his secretary called to ask me if I would have lunch with him. Oh. Yeah, and, you know, and Woody is such a mishkite. He's such an ugly prick. Oh. He really is. To get a woman the caliber of Mia Farrow. Well, it was always shocking to me. and amazing. Yeah. When we heard that Mia and Woody were together, yeah. it was like, what? He was, he was kind of cute in those days. Really? Oh. We're going back to 1980. Uh, but we, it's a weird kind of cute. It's not a cute kind of cute. Yeah, he ain't exactly cute. It's an ugly kind of cute. Yeah. <laughs> Mia's got a lot of love in her heart for ugly guys, because I'm telling you, Woody Allen is not cute. Woody is no fashion play. Right. Back then, Actually, he is. you got to read the book. He well, is totally consumed with clothing. Yeah. Well, yeah. he likes clothing, but Calvin Klein never called him to be no. in a poster. No. But anyway, so listen <laughs> to this. All right. Because there's a million things. I, I actually, look at this. I even marked off pages in the book. I never wow. do that. But I really got pissed. So, um, Woody. So he pursued you. Yeah. And, and pursued. Yeah. And he's got a lot of money, right, Mia? I mean. Oh, yeah. How does he have so much money? I, I wonder because, you know, he gives the actors very little. Right. You, you know, every, all the actors go in thinking they're going to do this art film. Right. But if he takes a vacation to Europe, he charters. A private plane. A private plane. And took the kids and yeah. took everybody. And whole big suites at the Ritz Hotel in Paris. And, and the pilots are, they yeah. have their hotels. And yeah, because I'm always that. thinking these are very low budget films and nobody really makes any money only he makes the money uh -huh. one of those uh like those what do you call that jet the uh, one that everyone's in the, the, G, the gs2 uh -huh. those cost about fifty thousand just to take like somewhere you know just to somewhere in the united states a, yeah just uh, one way uh-huh Oh yeah, they would cost him like two hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars for for a couple of weeks yeah. that we would be over there. Yeah, it'd be unbelievable. So I mean, you know, that's a pretty nice lifestyle. Sure. But Mia is such a good girlfriend that she would like want to make Woody happy. Now this this blew me away. I wish I, it, the, my problem is I'm too nice to women <laughs> because nobody ever wants to please me like this. You built. But he was nice, right? Uh, uh, no, this is already was starting to act like a dick, and I'll get into that. But right. but anyway, Woody would. Uh, you even built a separate shower for Woody because Woody's such a creep. He gets afraid of his own like germs. Like yeah. he won't. Like he won't. Um, he, he wants a clean shower and everything. Is he really crazy? Yeah. He built. <laughs> see, I would have dumped him right then and there. He had to have his own shower, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, he, uh, yeah. yeah. He had to have his own shower. He, we, see, we didn't have any showers in the house. <laughs> yeah. He would not take a bath. Right. So he had to have a shower, so I had to build one. So she builds him this immaculate, you know, bathroom. Right. Beautifully appointed. Only for him. Right. Only, Only for, for him. him. He goes in, and he comes out, and he says, check this out. The bathroom is no good. The shower drain is in the middle of the shower. Not. Th that's it. That's all he said. No explanation, nothing. And it's like nasty. Like, how dare you build yeah. me a shower and put the drain in the like middle? Like I should have known. Yeah. yeah. Like, and like I he's got some. Figure it out, and yeah. he wouldn't tell me. He's got some weird quirk. Yeah. Yeah. And that was when he brought. He had his own sh uh, bath shower mat that uh -huh. he brought in. He uh -huh. brought his own shower mat. And his own shower special shower shoes <laughs> that he wears in the shower. Woody Allen has special shower shoes. Mm -hmm. I can understand if you're going to a public gym and you want to wear right, shower yeah, shoes. Right. Yeah. You wear you those get... things then. In his own shower, he wears shower shoes and a sp he brings his own mat. To his but let me house. ask you something. Now, in the beginning, was he this quirky? Yeah, he had those things. Yeah, but you know, that wasn't the worst thing in the world. I said, because oh, he was nice little, to her. It's a little strange, but he was he was nice. But mm -hmm. he gets weirder and weirder. You know what? Though, well, here's if, the part I if felt Woody sad. wasn't making all those movies and writing those great scripts, it'd be a little less easy, you think, to to put up with this kind of uh, junk. Well, here's the amazing thing. Uh, the guy is such a savant. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to the Woody Allen movie, hey, they're great movies. They are. No question. Right. Such a savant. Mia describes in her book that he would write, like, this, this I couldn't believe, he would write an entire script like in some, on some garbage bags or something or some, I don't know, some s slips of paper. He would write like yeah. uh, Hannah and her sisters on a bunch of garbage bags uh -huh. or something. Uh -huh. Can you believe that? While we were traveling all around Europe, he'd use hotel stationery or whatever he could grab yeah. and just stick it in his pocket. Yeah, because it would just come to him at any time, yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. But that is wild. It's amazing. So I guess that's what I'm saying. So he's quirky, but the quirks also bring out this great. Yeah, yeah but he's also, but he's also. You, but you see me. I say I thought you would have left him. As soon as, as soon as all that stuff was going down with your daughter, that's what blew me away. And I, and you even say in your book, I can't even explain what the hell it was. And, and nor can I forgive myself. Right. I don't blame you. I mean, it's weird. That's the weird thing. It was like. He, 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 Woody Allen is so weird. He'd walk in. Here you have this whole family around you. Me, your girlfriend. You got this whole family. In would walk. Woody Allen, he'd walk straight to his three-year-old daughter, uh -huh. stand there behind her, pay attention to no one else, and then request to go into a, a small room with her alone and just be with her alone. He'd want to be alone with her. And I would read this and I'd go, Oh my God. It's an amazing story. Because like, you're like, throw him the hell out of the house. Yeah, I mean, that, that creeps you out. You, right? get, yeah. you know what it is? It, it's just you can't believe that a guy would be that sick, maybe. Right. You can't believe it. Your, your mind says, no, it, this can't be what I think it what it has to be right, right? he just you, loves you this girl like, right, right. Yeah, he just loves his daughter and then you got the therapist right on it. he's got therapists you know and we got a therapist for this situation yeah and the therapist says well you know it's this and it's that and it's overly intense and it's inappropriate but it's not sexual but so you believe them oh my god and you as far as I was concerned it was a marriage let me, me ask so you about I, that I, but let me ask you about that mm -hmm. does it a therapist the therapist must know that he was getting it on with Soon Yi. He must have known he was getting it, getting getting these feelings for the three year old. Doesn't must a therapist can a therapist come forward and warn you? Isn't that I mean? No, they yes, have, they, they can. Have. It's not the same as a lawyer. I believe a therapist they, would have. If they're, if they're doctors, they have a confidentiality clause as really? well, don't they? Is that true? I don't know. I don't know. But I can only tell you, tell you this. I went to his therapist after right. all these things started blowing up after the Soon Yi thing, mm -hmm. and I came begging the therapist to stop him, right. to save our family, to save SUNY. Right. That I told him about all the pain it was going to cause to all the children right. in the family. Never mind me, but yeah. all the kids, how it was going to ruin everybody. And um, the therapist listened to all this and said, it's not a therapist's job to moralize. Wow. This is a distinguished doctor, big stuff, wow. well thought of. Man. I left the office thinking, well, we, I, I won't get any help from him. Well, wouldn't he get in trouble if he said to you, yeah, I knew about all this and I kept my mouth shut, so maybe it's better for him to just say, hey, I don't know anything. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that he did know about it, but if he did, I, would, I wouldn't care what oath I took. I would go to the, uh, the mother of the child and say, listen, you get, get the kid away from him. Just get him away. Well, as a, as a doctor, you cannot discuss another patient with anyone. Screw it. As a human being, I'll discuss anything. Anything. I'll break well, all those yeah, rules. Well, yeah, but then nobody's going to tell you anything well, in therapy. No, I don't care. <laughs> I wouldn't care. If I knew a little kid was getting diddled by dad. Oh. You know what I mean? I would just get yeah. him. I would. But, I you know, care. my contention has always been that people like Woody Allen have a very difficult time getting any help because their therapists become enamored of them. 
yeah, and they maybe don't want to do anything that would hurt them or drive them away because they like the association. Yeah, in all fairness to the therapist you mentioned, I don't even know that he knew. I mean, you, know, you don't you don't know. No, that know. and that was a later therapist. I mean, right. he changed therapists after the SUNY thing. There right. had been another therapist for 20 years before that. He was seeing two therapists concurrently every day of the week. So and why does he see all these therapists since he's not getting any better? Well, yeah, that's, 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 the point, that's the point you say in the book, too. Yeah. I mean, you kind of wonder what the hell's going on. Yeah, but I'm, then you have to think, well, maybe he would have been an axe murderer. Yeah, you yeah that's yeah. true, too. That's true. Maybe, maybe they have been helping. Yeah, maybe. Uh, is he on medication? I don't know. Maybe he should oh. be. And meanwhile, so, so here's the other thing I didn't understand. So you come home, I mean, when you discover the pictures of uh, the naked pictures and everything, um, it seemed to me in the book that as pissed off as you were, you did go back with him for a while because he kept coming into the apartment and he had the key and all that. I, I mean, I, yeah. I was surprised by that. That surprised me. Well, here's how it feels at right. a time like that. First of all, I was completely traumatized. Yeah, I can imagine. And we led a very isolated existence. It was him and me and the kids in this a virtual bubble. He was your whole life. For everything. Uh, right. So he, at, at that time... Oddly enough, he was also the person I most needed. Right. And he was also saying to me, I'm sorry, I lost control, it will never happen again. Yeah. And for a time there, <coughs> he sounded like he was he was everything I needed. Yeah. He was, you know, it was real hard. Yeah. And I, I'm a different person now. I'm much tougher. Yeah, you I know, bet. I, I now know what I do, but, you know, then I... Could I, you ever trust another guy again, you think? It'd be real hard for me. Yeah, I can imagine. Have you been in another relationship since then? A, a, a couple, but I, I kept it light, and when as it got serious, I just... Backed I said, off? Sorry. Yeah. I don't blame yeah. you. I, forget guys. Guys have weird thoughts or something. I mean, Hey, hey, not all of them. Well, not me, but... I'm please, one of the few. Don't include yourself. I'm the only, that. Please, I'm trying to get a date. Uh, I'm one of the few good guys. You know what I mean? I, 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 I like to think that I would know if there was somebody I could really, really trust. Don't. You, you know but what? Bring them to me. I'm, I'm a better judge of this than you are. You, I'm, I'm telling sure you. Anybody you, would be a better be, judge than me. Because, because to me, it's kind of thing, too. But you see, when, I, when I'm reading about your past, your dad was a really weird guy. He was sneaking women into the into the house, right? And he had a separate entrance. Wasn't that all the whole thing going yeah, on? Yeah, he had. I started to read that part. I'm not. I'm not all through that yet. But he was a weird guy. So you know, maybe a whole image of men is weird or something. You know what I mean? I hope not. I don't know. Well, it often happens that way. If you have, you know, because your father is your identification, and and you're learning about love and 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 all of that stuff from your parents' relationship. Yeah. So subconsciously, you might think, well, you know, you're supposed to ignore all this. Right. Yeah, you know, and I think when you're a kid, or at least when I was a kid, I I was just so grateful that somebody would love me, mm -hmm. that I just loved them in return mm -hmm. for the fact that they loved me. And you ignored, you know, what they might be doing or who they might be. Uh, I, be, I, be I I always assumed they loved me just like I loved them. Mm -hmm. And that basically they were like me. Yeah. You know what's the worst thing you wrote about Woody Allen? What? The, the whole scenario you described when actors would work for him and he would berate them. He would tell them, ugh, your acting is like, like what I see on a soap opera. You know, when you do, I have only done one movie, but i got to tell you something. Betty Thomas was so careful not to bruise my ego. Right, it's very difficult because you're very vulnerable. Well, I, really I know hard. there were times I tried things in front of the camera that were totally wrong, mm -hmm. but she and I kind of knew it halfway going through, but I felt loose enough to be experimental. Right. And she would say to me, you know what, I don't know if I'd go that way. Maybe I'd do it this way. And if, and if somebody had, you know, knocked you down because of that, maybe there would have been no experimenting, and some of it was good. Oh, I would have died. If Betty Thomas hadn't been so nice to me, I know I couldn't have gotten through that movie. I would have crumbled. I mean, I really would have, because I remember the first three days on the set, I didn't know what I was doing. Well, I certainly know there were scenes that I had to, you know, actually evoke emotion, and that's, you know, for a non-actor, when you've never done that before... It's tough. And you've got a ton of people watching you. Well, yeah. you got to read like a real jackass. You got to read me his book, man, because Woody's, <laughs> yeah. Woody's just like brutal. I mean, like, and you know, and who the hell is he? He's not the world's greatest actor. He's just playing Woody Allen. You know what I mean? Right. That's right. weird. That, that was hard. I mean, Did you notice that he treats men and women differently? I just wondered about that. He doesn't like women. That's what I got from him. I, I really have always felt that from his movies, but I was I just wondering. I don't know that he likes men any better. Right. Uh -huh. I don't think he likes anybody because his parents are wacko. They're not even wacko. He just he just he can't stand where he came from. I guess, so. you know, they yeah. seemed like nice people to me, but... Um, you know what's weird about him? He just... This is really weird about Woody Allen. I'm going to close the topic on mm -hmm. Woody. I used to go see his movies early on, and my mother would never go with me. And my mother would say to me, <clears throat> I can't go see his movies. This, was, this is now going back to, like, 
the comedies. I mean, right, like, like bananas, like, like bananas and, and stuff. I go, well, stuff. why is that? She goes, he's a sad little man. Uh-huh. I said, well, mom, what are you talking about? He's a sad. He's th- he's playing a movie. She goes, no, no, no. There's something so sad and ugly about this disturbing. guy, and not and, and not uh-huh. physical. She said, there's something so disturbing. There's something so sad. He's such a depressed man, and he's so he's so. He, he hates himself. Mm. That is my mother saying this, and I, I never could understand it. But boy, oh boy, she must have been clairvoyant when it came to Woody Allen or well, something. Well, I always thought yeah. exactly yeah. that, but I thought he was being very funny about yeah, hating me too. himself. <laughs> Personally, I just felt like I was better off than him, yeah, so I'd go see his movie. better about yourself than him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's true, and I, I think that, um, you know, he's not shy. It's, it's contempt, self-contempt, yeah. and, and then contempt for everybody else. You know, and, and even like Frank Sinatra taking your virginity, that really bugs me for some reason. I can't oh, he, stand that. He, he, he I know you dig him. He was a good him. guy, though, yeah. Really? Yeah. But then he didn't want you to have a career, and... Yeah, and then he well, divorces yeah. you publicly, and just has someone come and tell you, you know, what kind of guy is that? Well, that was a weird relationship, too. I mean, you really have um, involved you. yourself you with, with men who, who really are power-crazed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, interesting, huh? Yeah. yeah. Boy... Well, what can I say? <laughs> Mia's ready to hang herself. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, it's fascinating. I mean, these were very interesting men. It's a real honest book. Yeah. I dig that. And I have to applaud that because a lot of times people would forgive themselves for any mistakes they make. And you are honest and just say, I was, I can't believe I did this. Right. I can't, yeah. I, I, it's taken me this long to, and, and I have no answers mm-hmm. for, for some of them. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I don't care about anything other than the fact that these Hollywood cretins who sit and critique everyone, who sit and go to charity events all the time, worried about and, children. And are passing judgment on everyone, everyone else. Everyone and everything have never once spoken out against Woody Allen. Yeah. It's completely accepted because when you are a rich, powerful man in Hollywood, you are excused anything. And I am telling you this is the truth. You can get away with anything. Well, they still go to France to work with Roman Polanski. If Woody Allen was a woman, he never would have gotten away with this. Mm -hmm. And if Woody Allen was a rich, powerful man, he'd never get away with this. That's right. He'd be in jail. He'd be in jail. I'm telling you, this is unbelievable to me. And I, the only other person I've seen actually say a word about it is Rosie, Rosie O'Donnell. O'Donnell. Not that I'm yeah. any fan of hers, but at least she at least opens her mouth yeah, about she's it. She's great. She's got some balls. Uh, everyone else, uh, Goldie Hawn goes and works with him. Madonna. Madonna. Any of these people. Madonna. Well, Madonna worked for him before she knew. Oh, that, is that right? Is that, that right? That was the movie I was in. Oh, oh I okay. She did, well, I wouldn't know if she yeah. did now. Wish well, she hadn't yeah. said that. We wanted to blast her. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, really. We were having a good time there for a second. Yeah, she was really nice when I worked with her. She was so nice and so sweet to my, my little kids. Oh, yeah? Oh, no, that's couldn't nice. Couldn't have been nicer. Yeah. I really liked working with you. I mean, not that I got to really do any heavy scene with you yeah. or anything, but you were real nice to me, and uh, I appreciated you being in the movie Private Parts. That's really kind of cool. I loved being in it. I can't wait to see it. You, you haven't seen it? Haven't it hasn't come out my way yet. Oh, you're kidding. It hasn't come to Litchfield County. It hasn't oh, come to Richfield County? Litchfield. Oh, Litchfield. It's oh, way out you're there. kidding. What are you doing? You spend all this time on the farm now? Yeah. That's yeah. what you do all day? Now, I mean, have you had problems working since um, this whole thing? Since what do you think? Well, yeah. there are theories that there was a sort of blacklist in Hollywood. Oh, that's nice. They did that to you. I, I don't know if that's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I've done four movies, so that's good. Two mm-hmm. have, been, have been in Ireland, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I'm hoping to do another soon. Right. You like acting? Yeah. yeah. I love it. Don't you love it now? Yeah, I thought it was great. I just, I just got the uh, sort of impression that that you felt like you weren't very good at it or something. Yeah, and I, I worried about sad. that. You know, it's, it was, it was all the, you know, all the years with Woody. I think. Yeah, well, yeah, he's maybe. not, he's not real encouraging. He's real <laughs> no. cold. That's yeah. horrible. Well, I can't yeah. believe you could work with him all day and then you have another life with him and he's. he's he would never throw a compliment. Hypercritical and. Yeah, and, and as long as you're talking about his movies and his next script, his next project. You're okay with him, but if you talk about anything like your children or anything like that, he'll. Freak he doesn't out. want to hear any other. Yeah, I just sounds see, like somebody else I know. Uh, I don't see how you could put. I don't see how you could put up with that. Seriously. Why did I put up with that? I don't know. I don't know. It's something you get, but who knows? Maybe he filled some sort of need. Yeah, because there was a part of it. I mean, there were years that were really good. He couldn't have been good in the sack, though. I mean, honestly. Is he? No. He's not, right? Oh, I know it. Oh, God, man! I know, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> you even, you couldn't even, oh, no. There, you, you know, in fact, there oh, were. Would, it wasn't a big factor. <laughs> but there were a lot of reports <laughs> saints. after the, the bus stop yeah. that the relationship had been sexless, sexless for quite some time. That's not true. Okay. No? <clears throat> no. Yeah. 
It sounds like I'd rather not have Ma- sex with him. Probably you pre- would have preferred it. Uh. This is, you know, after Frank Sinatra, you know. If Frank was good? Great lover. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I figured Frank would be good. Why do you figure that? Because, you know, he, men. Really? he practiced yeah. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Frank's big, too. I read that in a magazine, that Frank is actually a very large man. True or false, Mia? <laughs> I don't feel at liberty to talk uh. about that. Kind of, yeah, you never do reveal that in your book, do you? No. No. <laughs> Oh, damn. The book is real good. You got to yeah. read it. It's really good. And I do admire you a lot. I mean, the, the stuff you do with these kids, man, I could never be that I have given. one other question because a lot of times in, you know, when a relationship breaks up, you lose friends to one or the other. You know, like all the friends go with one spouse. They all went the with other. Woody. They all went with Woody? Yeah, well, there weren't many of them. All of them worked for him anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they're, yeah, of course. Oh. This guy's such a psycho that he has... Um, he has doctors for everything. Yeah. Pills for everything. Every part of his body. He has, has a, doctor. a doctor for. Good yeah. lord. Foot doctor, this doctor, that. He has screenings when his movies come out. He has doctor screenings. <laughs> yeah. And it, and they're filled. And you're wondering why he can't get good advice. <laughs> <laughs> it's just unbelievable. They want to be at the screening. It's just endless. Hey, here's a doctor on the phone. He says he's a psychologist. He says uh, Woody Allen's psychiatrist has a duty to report child abuse. Okay, I want to hear this because right. I don't really don't know the law. And yeah. Hi. How you doing? Uh, all right. Yeah, because this Issue. is the question I had when I read the book. I said, hey, wait a second. If you're a therapist and you're listening to some guy fantasizing, now I don't know that his therapist got or to hear this. Or actually admitting to you that he's... Well, here's the thing. Go ahead. Even if there is a reasonable doubt, mm-hmm. if the child is a minor, or even if the act occurred when the child is a minor, yeah. the therapist is a state-mandated reporter. They are legally obligated to report it to the state. I and see. then it's up to Child Protective Services to determine whether or not there's just cause and what's going on. So if the psychiatrist even had an inkling, the psychiatrist violated the law. Hmm. Ooh. Well, it was a doctor who reported it. Oh, oh was it? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then a psychiatrist also reported it in mm-hmm. New York. Uh, was it the attending psychiatrist, the one who was seeing the nut job? Yes. <laughs> the nut job, yeah. Well, I just can't believe there there isn't uh, I don't know. I just can't believe there isn't more outrage among Hollywood people. But it doesn't surprise me. They're all shallow. Absolutely. That's They're where, all you know, after you were jobs. great during right. that time. You know, yeah. you were just the lone voice. Uh, and because my I don't teenage kids would listen to you, you know, every yeah. day and yeah. say, you know, take heart. You know, Howard Stern said this <laughs> the or one, that. The one lone yeah, voice. The other lone. <laughs> the other, <laughs> the other <loon>. loner. <laughs> yeah. You got one friend. Yeah. He has no others, but. <laughs> you should have just adopted me. <laughs> no, I, mean, I uh, ever wonder why someone has two therapists for the, all those years every single day. Yeah, but something must really be troubling him. Yeah. He had one therapist for like the first 40 years and then he had two therapists well three if you count the one that he was going to for the child so those three he was seeing concurrently wow. every, every day? day and i'm talking about sundays too jeez that was <laughs> after uh the the, the pic that i found the pictures oh, wow my goodness the pictures that that's when i shut the book i just said i can't take this anymore i can't take it the guy that, the guy the guy's unusual. got and he leaves these naked pictures of soon yi oh, really? right where yeah. mia farrow can find yeah. him yeah Right where she could find him. Because he wants to be discovered. I, I, I thought that was a cry for help. Yeah. yeah, and then I like when you finally throw Woody out, he goes, well, that means I'm free to date anyone, including uh, Soon Yi. I mean, what, what, are you, what are you, a psycho? You can get any woman you want on the planet. You're a wealthy man, you're a Hollywood director. What do you need her daughter for? But, you know, the worst of it was he never understood that he did anything wrong. No. Or so he says. He doesn't care. Mm-hmm. Is that it? Yeah, I don't think he sees things in terms of right and wrong. That's when his therapist said it's not a therapist's job to moralize. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. You have to wonder what 45, what's Woody, 66? Or uh-huh. I mean, when are you going to learn? You know, of, 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 there is no morality. Right, there. right. He's not getting when, it from his I believe your story entirely. When he said, when he stood yeah. there at that Otherwise press conference. I'd be sued if I know, yeah. I know. I believe and the said, whole thing. The heart wants what the heart wants. I was like. What? Um, yeah. yeah, there was one. He's Scary a weird guy. Man. He's just a weird guy. I mean, the more I read... So him, any, anything you want to do, you just do? You know what he had the nerve to say? What? After the pictures of Sun Yi, Mia discovers... you got to read this book, I'm telling you. After you discover, you know, discover the pictures and everything, he says, Well, why don't we pick up from here and learn from this? We should learn from this. We like we, he, she yeah. made a mistake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. We, we should learn from this. I'm saying that reading that. Go. See now, me. He would have been a battered husband. Yeah, he would have said, "Okay, I've learned from this." I mean, he's over the head with that. I'm going to beat the you know, yeah. oh. <laughs> the bleep out of you. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, and, and you've lost contact with Soon Yi, of course, your daughter. Of course. Yeah, I tried. Mm. They you know, that. For the first couple of years, I tried to get in touch with her, and I wrote to her, and I sent her stuff, and I sent her her old scrapbooks and you know, wow. pictures of us and the kids and stuff, but I never heard. I kind of got the impression from the book, too, that she had so, like a learning disability or something where she could be easily taken advantage of. Yeah. 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 Oh. That's too bad. Uh, I know. It's kind of a sad story in a way, but you're an amazing person. I mean, you've... Well, that was the one thing I would always yeah. say when this whole thing, uh, you know, started. I said, Suni will be the one who's hurt the most. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Because eventually he's, he's going to go on to someone else, and she has no support system. No. An alta cockamishkite like you, Woody Allen. Shame on you, you dick. You are. You ought to release that girl. Mm. You maniac. What's the matter with you? You should be ashamed of yourself. I would never work with you. Never. Ever. You're nothing to me. You're garbage. You're garbage. You're human waste. Take a woman's daughter out of her house. You are garbage. And also to rob that girl of her family. Yeah, it's just unbelievable. That's all. I read the book. I went nuts. But you wrote it so well. Thank you. You wrote it so well. It's really good. I mean, it's... And uh, it's about a lot more than Woody Allen, too. It is, it is. Well, I, you I, had a, a very rich life. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And a lot of it is First of all, I didn't, know you, I didn't know your sister... This was kind of interesting uh, trivia. Your sister... The, the song Dear Prudence is about me as sister. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Your sister's name is Prudence. Yeah. Yeah. And you hung out with the Beatles in India, with the Maharishi and the whole thing. Uh -huh. I've been meditating over 20 years. Mm -hmm. Have you? Yeah, I do TM. Really? Yeah, I've been doing it over 20 years. You didn't sneeze right in the middle of getting your mantra, did you? <laughs> no. No. I thought it was... Uh, I got a little hay fever, and I put what? the flowers down like you're supposed to do yeah. as a tradition. Yeah. And he gave me my mantra, and he said it's so quiet. And I was leaning forward to catch it, and as he said it, I sneezed. Ugh. Do you still do you still meditate, or you don't? Yeah, I do. Oh, you do? Yeah, I do. Oh, wow. So yeah. you've been doing it a real long time. Yeah, since 1967. Twice a day in the whole yeah. thing, yeah. No, no, I don't no? do it twice a day. Do you do it twice oh, a day? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, re I'm kind of religious about it. I, I should it. be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I do it in a crisis. You ought to get Woody to meditate. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't want to be in a room alone with himself. No, because I think <laughs> deep down he's shallow. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I don't think he'd have anywhere to go. Uh, yeah. maybe, maybe there's no soul there. Yeah, he'd sink right into nothing. <laughs> and I'm surprised you never dated one of the Beatles. Oh, I would have in a flash. John. Yeah. But they were all married or had girlfriends. Oh, and the, the girlfriends time. were there with them? Yeah, the Cynthia was with John. That's how mm. far back that was. Right. And uh, Paul had Jane Asher. Right. Ringo had Maureen. Right. And George had Patty Harrison. But you were attracted to them, right? I would imagine a woman would be pretty taken with the I Beatles. I was real attracted to John. And he was the first, because my marriage with Frank had just broken up, so he was the first guy after Frank that I was really attracted to. But did you sense that he was attracted to you as well? Mm, I didn't sense it. No? Cynthia was right there anyway. Yeah. Anyway, was, you know, he was married. I didn't allow it to get... He was a flirt, though, wasn't he? Uh, I, I you didn't pick that up? I didn't know. Really? No. He flirted with me quite often. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing how you always hung around with like like famous people and dated famous people. But she lived in that world all of her life. It was like normal for I her. I think it's it's a world yeah. where most of those people hate my guts. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I it's a world so. I'm not part of. <laughs> I'm kind of happy those people hate my guts, quite frankly. Now you're a big movie star, though. Yeah, but you. so what? I had a yeah, you know, I mean, that. being in the movie crashes those barriers. Absolutely. Yeah, but because I... Because they start to say, well, you know what the hell? He could give me a job. Yeah, my life doesn't <laughs> change from that anyway. Oh, it does. You just don't go out. Right. I stay home, so I don't know what's going <laughs> Everybody on. Everybody would be real nice to you in Hollywood. Oh, would they? Yeah. Yeah, screw them. I don't care about that. You know what I mean? I just care about the work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you going to do another movie? Yeah, I'm going to do another movie. In fact, right. uh, I kind of have a pretty interesting script right now. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm, so you I got a big announcement for us soon? No, I don't know. I want to have the summer free, though, unless something really cool happens mm -hmm. where i got to start doing it. But I did like acting, man. That was good. It is fun. And then when the New York Times and stuff all said I was a good actor, that Everybody was really pleasing. Everybody said you were good. Yeah, that was good. That was good to hear. You know what I mean? I knew you were going to be good. When I was talking to you and you were talking about what you were going through at that time, and right. you were as fart man. Right. Yeah, I, I was sitting there. I meet me at Farrell and I'm in my fart man costume. And I'm like, oh, God, why does she have to see me like this with my big ass sticking out? And, you know, my belly. and You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, but from the way you were talking about acting, I could tell that you'd gotten into it. So yeah. I knew you were going to be good. Then it was great reading all those reviews. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, amazing. One after another. I was sitting there, you know, talking to me, and she had all her kids around. And, like, one of the kids is in a wheelchair. 
one of the kids was blind. One of the kids, and I'm going, wow. And she's so good with them. Mm. It's like, man, I'm, I'm so shallow. Well, she manages to work and be with her children. I don't know how you do that. Why well, bring him with me? Yeah, I know. They're everywhere. He won't bring his. No. <laughs> well, he's got Allison. I need a wife. <laughs> and it's you a need good a wife. Thing, too. That's your problem. <laughs> and you know what's weird, too, in the book? You, you, you kind of like lead me to believe that you, you don't really have that much money. You're sort of uh, not in poverty, but you, the apartment that you had in Manhattan was really a uh, rent control apartment. Yeah, that my mom had had for 35 years or something. You don't have that anymore? No. Hmm. No. Well, you know, rent control was changing, and we wanted to get out of the yeah. city. I didn't want to be here anymore. Yeah. It's better for the kids, you know, they got their horses now and yeah. everything. Yeah, it sounds pretty cool. She's got like a farm or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have a real farm now. I'm going to come wow. up and visit you, but I'm not bringing my wife and kids. I just want to hang with you and yeah. get to know you a little bit, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I would suggest putting him to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to do some farm work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I told my wife, I said, yeah, me and Farrell invited us up to her house, but with you guys. So I want to go. <laughs> you guys can go. I'm not going. <laughs> I didn't realize you were invited. Uh, and and uh, so now you have this quiet country life. Yeah. You just kind of hang out. Yeah. And that's and it. And you don't have to work, do you? Oh, yeah. Oh, you do? You can't have this many children and not have yeah. to work. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you should see the expenses. Oh, I can imagine. I mean, I'm going through this thing. It's unbelievable. How much money you got to spend? Because a lot of the kids have special needs too, right? right. So you don't talk about like when you're writing the book, like just to go uh, and let's say everybody wants a sandwich for lunch. What do you got to go through? Like eighty loaves of bread or something? Yeah, if everybody wants um, a sandwich, it'd be like two loaves of bread. If yeah. everybody wants spaghetti, it'd be four packages of spaghetti. Yeah, it's wow. not cheap. It'd be like three cans of tuna if everyone wants tuna. <laughs> everybody wants eggs, that'd be three dozen eggs. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's like, like feeding a team. It's like having Walter Hudson in your house. <laughs> <laughs> it's outrageous. But it's like, you know, your house, you, 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 your yeah. house, your family consists of a football team. It's a camp. It's a yeah. summer camp yeah. going on there. So you got to make these large orders of everything. Don't you ever get, I, I get the impression of the book, you don't ever get drained and you don't go, oh, I've had but you must have a lot of help. I, I, I have a woman who comes in from 9.30 to 4.30. That's uh -huh. it. A woman? Wow. Yeah, one woman. <laughs> oh, no. She yeah. must really hate you. <laughs> what a life. Get someone else. Get oh, no, help. it's lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> Christ. I thought you had an assembly line in the kitchen. But mm. they're all at school now. Oh, even okay. Even the baby. Oh, okay. Three goes two mornings a week. Uh -huh. She's great. Thank yes. God. my friend Judy. Yeah. She's, she That's, loves the kids. I'd but, start, you know, the one other thing we haven't addressed is, you know, Satchel. Yes. Well, he gets a one week, uh, an hour a week visitation. An hour a week Woody with which, Woody. Which, which Woody hasn't taken him up on. Right. Oh, really? He hasn't, Woody hasn't seen him for two years. See, that's ah. why you got to read the book, because if oh, he can't geez. see the little girl... He doesn't want to see anybody. Right. He says, I'll see uh, the girl with Satchel. But if I can't see them both, I don't want to see them at all. Uh, That's what I'm saying. You get, you get disgusted. Uh, you want to just you want to take the book and throw it out the window after a while. But it's cool. Oh, nothing happened there. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. What a nut. It's not even funny. Sheesh. But isn't the beginning part of the book, isn't it? Isn't there a lot of funny stuff? Yeah, in no, there is. It, but, but it's a cool book. Trust me. It's very cool. Thank you. It's a good book. And I can't Because you know why you were honest in it. I'm sick of these books where, you know, I don't want to read about comedians and uh, their, their, you know, their, their stand-up routines. I want to read about people's real lives because I'm a yenta. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I want to know. Yeah. I want to know what's going on. And I can't remember who it was, but I did in one of the tabloids see somebody, you know, was on vacation and they were lounging on a, you know, one of those chasers or something, taking the sun, and they had your book. And I think did it was they? Sandra Bullock or somebody like really? that, that who oh, was yeah. reading your book. She's a yenta, too. On vacation. Yeah. She's a big yenta. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra Bullock. <laughs> well, anyway. I the was book afraid nobody would buy oh, it. Oh, no. Was. People are reading it. <laughs> no, people are reading it. Believe me. you got plenty to say. Mia Farrow, a memoir. What Falls Away, big picture of me in there. There's even pictures for you guys out there. You know, I know that like my audience likes pictures. Mm. We found that with my book. Every page I put a picture. <laughs> Make everybody happy, you know what I mean? I loved your book. Thank you. Thanks. I can't believe you didn't see the movie. I will. I mean, I'm, I'm waiting for it to come a little nearer. Oh, no excuse. I could have set up a, a private screening, baby. Yeah, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> I should have come to the premiere all dressed up. Yeah, where were you? I, I, I don't know, out of the country. Busy on that farm every minute. Yeah. Got to get off that farm. You didn't have a doctor screening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My doctors all showed up. Uh -huh. I actually don't have any doctors, do I? <laughs> no. No. And I'm staying away from therapists. Uh. I can see they don't do any good. Anyway, Mia Farrow, great to have you here. Thank you very much for having me. I'm glad me. you came in. I know there was yeah. some hesitation at first, like maybe you shouldn't come in. Oh, th 
the people we call, we called up and said, hey, would me and Farrow come mm-hmm. in? And they said, oh, we don't know, we don't know. You know, it's a whole big deal when you come somewhere. So I wanted to see you. I'm this glad is you. Good. I'm glad you came in, and the books Thank are real you. good. I recommend it. Me and Farrow, what falls away? And when's the last time I read a book? Yeah, it's been a while. It's been yeah. a while. It was raining Saturday. I just sat down in my chair and I started. And I said, "Let me see this." And I start reading. I go, "Oh my God! Oh my Lord! Oh man! Oh God!" <laughs> Are you seeing Christopher Darden? No, dear, I'm not oh, seeing Christopher. Please, because I watch the show. You know, I watch it all the time, and you two oh, are so perfect together. Really? Oh, really? <laughs> well, there you go. Well, you know what? You've been a bad. You you've been made some really bad choices. I'm not letting you choose for <laughs> oh. me. <laughs> You're right. Robin is seeing uh, Sidney Poitier. <laughs> <laughs> and Mia made some good choices. Uh, well, of course. I just can't, I, I I just just can't think of them right now. I uh. just don't think. <laughs> we ought to let her choose men. Frank Sinatra walks into your room the wedding night, and you gave yourself to him. You gave your virginity to him. I can't believe it. I never had a virgin. Was he singing? Did he sing to you? Or? Yeah. Hey, baby, I'm here. <laughs> That's a cool But he was so yeah. old. He was so much older than you. He was 50, but he was great looking. Really? Yeah. You're into older guys. I was then. Yeah. You're into that whole thing. That's like you looking for your father. Oh, you so think? they say. Yeah, Who there's knows? worse things to look for, right? Right, right, exactly. What do I know? I'm not a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. How'd you stay a virgin through Peyton Place? That's what I can't figure well, out. Well, I met Frank at the beginning of Peyton Place. Oh, I just turned 19. Right. It was the Peyton Place was like school. Right. I'd ride my horse in the morning. I'd go to Peyton Place. Did, did you get dressed up for your wedding night? Like, did you put on like a, a, a like a peignoir. silk a peignoir or something? <laughs> no, I, I, I didn't. It, it wasn't a wedding night. We'd been going together for like three years when we got married. Right. I didn't get married till I was twenty-one. Right. So no, I, I visited him in Palm Springs. And, right. Um, and that was it. And that was it. Hey, baby. How long did it take before we actually? Yeah. yeah. Did you hold out? Well, it was, it was a funny thing, because he invited me uh, to see a screening of his movie. Uh-huh. And um, I went and I sat with him, and we were watching the movie, and I can't remember a thing about the movie, but, but that we were holding hands. Uh-huh. And uh, after the movie, he said, uh, will, you, will you come back to Palm Springs with me? I'm flying back tonight on my own plane. Oh, God. And <laughs> I just babbled. I said, oh, you know, I, I, I haven't got my pajamas, and, uh, pajamas. <laughs> my and, and I have this cat, and he'll only eat baby food and I you know thank you very much and you know I'm sorry about the hand holding and just, you know no. I was for I thought I was forward you know oh, that dear. I shouldn't have done it and he said no well then come tomorrow if you're more comfortable I'll send the plane for you and I thought you know he's going to send the plane for me and the cat this is incredible <laughs> so all that night I said okay you know and that night I just couldn't sleep at all and the next morning I couldn't decide how many jars of cat food to bring <laughs> baby food because if I stay for the day that was two jars but if he thought I was going to stay overnight, then I'd have to bring four jars. And I brought four <laughs> jars. It was like the boldest thing I ever did. Wow. We didn't make it through the afternoon. Oh, boy. Really? Yeah, I got there, and he showed me around the house. Mm-hmm. And, oh, you you know, and he had you. a separate room for me. Yeah. And then just... See, you know, that's the best move. What is he? Has a, yeah, he has a separate room. <laughs> and then me the shep- separate room. Right. And I was holding the cat. Yeah. And I said, um, I, I better get a cat box, because, mm. you know, we'd flown all the way from L.A., Right. I get a cat, can I set up my cat box now? Yeah, a little box. And and he, he gave me a really great kiss. Wow. And that was it. With the cat in your hand. <laughs> yeah, the cat. He put the cat down. He was like, hey, let me pet your he pussy. His, and then, oh, uh, but, and then he oh, met the pussy cat. No, no, that, that's the old line from the uh, Johnny Carson show. Remember that? <laughs> no. That's what that, that's what happened on Johnny Carson. Hey, Josh Gabor came on with a cat. Yeah. And Johnny said, can I pet your pussy? <laughs> <laughs> but you don't know that one? That was a great, all-time great line. That was really cool. First time you ever played a compliment to Johnny. Yeah, it was the only good thing Johnny ever did. <laughs> <laughs> Bastard. But another creep. <laughs> All these Hollywood creeps. So, so, and then he kissed you. Yeah. He's, he took the cat out of my arms. It was real romantic. And he put it on the floor. Wow. And I remember having the presence of mind to step on the leash. Yeah. Because You didn't uh, want the, the cat, cat running out. I didn't want the cat to run away. Did the cat watch while Frank seduced you? Oh. Uh, no, well, you know. That's weird. I won't let my cat in the room when I have sex. <laughs> we set up the cat box and we went in another room. And, and he began kissing you and disrobed you. Oh, man. That was where it happened. <laughs> wow. Right in Palm Springs. He undressed you? Yeah. He did. That's romantic. And I bet it hurt, too. Power. Come on, your first time. <laughs> oh. Right? That's not pleasant. 
It has to hurt. <laughs> Frank being so big. Should have broken in someone with like like, like me. <laughs> you want to up to Frank. Oh, really? That's all there is? <laughs> oh, I can do this. <laughs> and you li- did you like it the first time, seriously? Um, no, well, you know, it was a little fraught. Yeah, I, I probably thought, quick, oh, too. Oh, God. Yeah, it messy. was a little quick. <laughs> right. <laughs> Love but I was there for a couple of days, mm. and so it, it, it improved. Wow. Mm. Wow. Can't believe it. You know, Frank offered to break Woody's legs. Uh, I know. That's Isn't true. Isn't that sweet of him? Yeah, I think that's fantastic. <laughs> that's him showing his love. <laughs> I love you, baby. <laughs> what do you need? You need his legs broken? <laughs> is Woody Allen. You yeah, want I should break his legs? <laughs> <laughs> that is sweet. See, that's sweet. Uh, yeah, he's sweet. Yeah. You know, you have to if you're on his it. good side. Yeah. <laughs> if you're getting your, leg. your legs that are big, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I've read stuff about him, though. He has a real creepy side, too, you say. Like, you didn't hang around long enough to see I that. I mean, how did he oh, yes, break I up did. with no. you? No, you did. Yeah, well, you know, oh, well, I was doing a movie, and I was also supposed to do a movie for him when my movie ended. Uh-huh. My movie was Rosemary's Baby. Yeah. And it was supposed to end um, after three months, and then I was to do his movie. So he had begun his movie. My start date was arriving, and Rosemary's Baby went three three months over schedule. Uh-huh. Hmm. So I, he said, well, you got to leave your movie and, and yeah. come and do my movie. Yeah. I said, I can't do that. I, I, I worked for three months on, on the movie. You can't just walk out on the No kidding. But then and it came out to either leave your movie or I'm leaving you. Wow. But wow. I didn't believe it. You know, I just didn't uh, believe it. Man, that that's it weird. Then yeah. His, his lawyer came and, and served me with that. And you papers. never asked him for a dime? Of course not. I wouldn't do that. That's unbelievable. Jeez, you're unbelievable. What but a great who, gal. But who would do that? Who would do I that? Mean, you know, oh, but who, read the papers, Mia. Yeah, <laughs> Come on. who are they, you know? What are you talking about? Who are they, those people? I mean, you wouldn't do that. Yeah, a little alimony doesn't hurt. Yeah. Could have helped with the kids. Could have yeah, bought a lot of sandwiches. What's he doing with all that money anyways? Just lying there. He should leave you some money in his will for not taking any of his money when he was married to you. You look great, by the way. Thank you. I'll tell you that. I was hot for you the day we were shooting. Looking you over, all dolled My up. mother thinks that you're about the best-looking guy on television. Really? Or really? Movies. Yeah, my mother watches your show, listened to your show for years. But then she, she likes Tarzan. She's yeah. listening right now. She <laughs> thinks you are the cool. Really? Yeah, yeah. And she thinks Robin's so beautiful. Oh, well, then she's, she's very I'd like to go out with your mother. She's really, uh, I've always loved, she was the best Jane. <laughs> she was your best mother Jane. was the best Jane. Yeah. after that, there was no Jane. You know why yeah, your mother no likes Jane's me? She's that. never seen me in a loincloth. She'd throw up if she saw it. Well, if your mom's, let me give a shout out to your mom. That's right. She was the, she was the original Jane, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Mom was the original Jane. And you see some of those early films. She was in a really racy outfit. Wow. Yeah. She my was, dad. They, they toned it down after a while. The first one. Yeah. Had open side. Right. My dad and I every weekend would sit and watch Tarzan over and over again. My Absolutely. father's a Tarzan freak. Yeah. Really? And we would just have to sit there and watch Tarzan. But I loved it. I mean, we would just watch Tarzan. And he'd yeah. analyze Tarzan. Everything about Tarzan. My father's like, it was Tarzan. Yeah. But I saw like the very first one and I was like, whoa, look at that outfit. It's falling off. <laughs> hey, did your mom visit uh, Johnny Weissmuller when he was in the old age home? And yeah. he thought he was Tarzan? Yeah. No kidding. Oh. oh, I wish I had tape of that. Yeah. Wasn't he running down the hall screaming the Tarzan like yell? Oh. Tarzan yell. <laughs> oh, I would have loved to see that. Yeah. Did they did they bury him as Tarzan? Like Bella Lugosi Gee, was. I don't know. Oh, like in the loincloth? I don't know. Uh-huh. Don't you love guys who in Hollywood who flip out and become their characters at the end? That's something like Bella Lugosi had to be buried as Dracula. Is that true? Isn't that unbelievable? And Johnny Weissmuller is the other guy. He was running down the halls of the old age home as Tarzan. Yeah, well, Clayton Moore isn't far behind him. He's still running. He's the, the Lone, Lone Ranger. Ranger. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you something. They used to have to say, hey, Tarzan. Like, like if you said, hey, Johnny Weissmuller, he wouldn't forget, answer. He wouldn't answer. It would be like, Tarzan, come in. Oh, ugh. <laughs> I mean, I would have. Oh, if my mom comes to New York, let her come oh, and do 10 oh, minutes oh, on her visits to oh, Johnny Weissmuller. Oh, please. I would kill for that. Great. I would kill for that. Oh, I'm not kidding. Ask, ask your mother how Cheetah is, by the way. I'm, I'm very concerned about <laughs> she him. She hated Cheetah. She hated Cheetah? Yeah. Good. I hate <laughs> Cheetah. <laughs> she, Cheetah. She called Cheetah that bastard. Now she calls Woody that bastard. <laughs> there it is, Mia Farrell, What Falls Away. Make sure that you uh, get a copy of this book. It's an incredible book. It's really good. And thanks for coming so on the show. Much. Yeah, Thank love you, seeing Howard. you. Thank thanks, you, Mia. And thanks for being in my movie, too. So, Mia, was everything okay? Come this way. Oh, yeah. Come this way. Howard's the way. greatest. It's too bad he's married, you know? He might be the perfect guy. He might be. He might have been the one that got away. He might have been the one. Bye. Okay, Thank bye. you for a nice time.